when is enough enough? That's the conversation we're going to have here today on Relationship Thursday. Hey guys, doing this is Ron Simplified Myers, author, podcaster, and your uplifting life partner. Now, this conversation can, can go in many different directions, and of course, they're going to have different views depending on who you're talking, talking to. And because there are some people that believe when it comes to relationships that you should fight to, as you know, as your marriage file says, <laughs> to death do us part. And I'm a person who has always believed in marriage. I still believe in marriage. I believe you fight for your marriage, but at the same time, I have never been and will never be a person that tells you if you're in something that is destroying you mentally or physically that I will ever agree or ever teach that that's something you should stay a part of. Um, so that's kind of where we were at. I was having this conversation and got into, you know, um, because again, for some people for religious reasons will say that once they're married, they have to see it to the end. And I'm not here to tell people again what to believe. Everything that I share are my perspectives. Um, but I'm not a person that's going to ever buy into that philosophy if you're being, as I said, mentally or physically abused. I personally couldn't imagine. And again, I'm not trying to get into a spiritual conversation here. I'm not, I have a hard time believing that there would be someone that would be your creator that would tell you to stay into something that is destroying you mentally and physically. Because you know if you get destroyed mentally, you will get destroyed physically. And as we know, stress is the number one killer. And I have a, a hard time believing that someone's going to tell you that's a situation you should stay in no matter what. Because what it comes down to is if you have people that aren't willing to make a change. And you guys know I'm always talking about that it's about getting you together. Self-love. That's what Self-Love Monday is all about. It's all about let's get you together. And then you will see if the person is right. Because sometimes what people do is they jump the gun and they get out of a relationship when they are actually the problem. And then they go into other relationships and they keep having problems and they keep blaming everyone else when the issue is, and I'm not saying they are the only problem, but they play a major role in the problems in the situation because of what they keep bringing into the relationship. There's an old saying that if you learned how to leave yourself at home, you could probably have a good time. And that's true for a lot of people. Um, but we were actually on this conversation when, we're, when we were in this, you know, um, conversation. One of the things, and you guys have heard me talk about before, the myth that has to do with money. Because we'll hear that money is the number one reason why people get divorced, why people have their relationship problems and that type of stuff. And as you guys know, I was in the financial service field for over 30 years. And so it would have been easy for me to buy into that myth because it's exactly what it is. Um, because it would serve me to tell people, you know, that's the number one reason. So you need to sit down with me, help you, help you get your finance together. Cause that's the number one reason people get divorced. No, it's not folks. And don't let anybody ever convince you that that's real. Um, now I will agree. It is the number one topic in almost every relationship. That's including people that have money because people that have money are always trying to figure out how to increase their money and what they can invest in and what they can purchase. And that's usually why they have more money is because they're always trying to figure out how to expand their, 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 their wealth. And people that don't have it spend all their time trying to figure out how to get some so they can, if nothing else, just pay their bills. So it is true. It is a probably the number one topic in almost all relationships. Um, I had a gentleman that, that was telling me one time and he wanted to argue that point. He's like, no, it's, it, it, it is. It's the number one reason. I said, so why do people that have money keep getting uh, breaking up? Why you hear all the time they're in many marriages? Because folks, it's not. Will Smith made the comment, and I've said this recently, that no amount of money will ever make a relationship work. Folks, that's real. With or without, that is not going to make your relationship. If That's why you guys keep hearing me saying about character and integrity. Figure that out first, because we could go accumulate money and wealth and that type of stuff. We go do that together. Without character and integrity, that relationship is done with 
or without money because character and integrity will dissolve that relationship. So that's why for me, and really the whole purpose of this conversation here is when is enough enough? When is it that you, you know, and that's why some people do get in, um, cause I remember I was watching, um, was it the Oprah show one time? And I mean, this was an old, old segment, but there was a couple on there and I happened to see the second segment, which was them coming back, um, on the show for the second time. The first time they were talking about divorce and sex was bad and the relationship wasn't working and and this was a typical example of how money destroys a relationship <laughs> and basically what they did was prove my 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 thought process because here i'm watching the second episode and they had this financial expert that oprah had linked them up with who basically got them to get on the same page because one of the challenges they were having is the wife was kind of upset that the husband would always go buy clothes and things for the kids and not tell him, tell her and just did it. And so they would fight about those kind of things because she felt she wasn't being a part of what was going on. And she felt sometimes they were bad decisions that were being made with finances. And so that's why people will say, see that, see Ron, there, there, that's it. See, it was with finances. That wasn't the problem. The problem was they were not communicating. They were not on the same team. That was the problem. Money was just what they, what, what they saw as the biggest obstacle because they were having issues in, in, in other areas of their life. Because as you guys hear me say, how you do some things, how you do all things. Folks, if they're not agreeing on the same squad from a financial perspective, trust me, they're fighting in every other area also. So the breakdown in the relationship is the problem. Money is just the one that people can measure and they can see, and therefore they say, that's the reason. It's like people say, well, we, we, we got divorced because of the Lamborghini. And you go, whoa, what kind of Lamborghini did you have? They go, well, we never had one, but that's why we, we got divorced because he wanted one and he was willing to do whatever it take. I didn't want one. And we, folks, that's not, the Lamborghini was never in the picture. So how is that the reason you got divorced? And how was the money the issue? You heard the conversation. You wanted something that they didn't want. You guys weren't communicating. You weren't on the same page. That's where the breakdown is. That's why I keep saying, and the purpose of this conversation is, when is enough enough? Because this is not a financial conversation. This is when do you get to a point where you recognize that your partner has moved on from the relationship. The partner has decided that they're only thinking about themselves. Maybe because of religious reasons or for uh, family reasons, because their family doesn't believe in divorce or, you know, different things that are outside influences that are making them stay in the marriage physically, but not because mentally they're in the relationship. Mentally, they have checked out. Mentally, they're not participating. Mentally, they're not trying to participate. They have totally checked out. They have actually walked out on the marriage from a mental just there physically. When is enough? Enough. That's something only you get to decide. Now, my thing is, and that's what, uh, again, I always talk about, is not worry about them and be the best partner you could possibly be. Because that's all you can do. It's just as I say all the time, be the best you possible. Build the tallest building. As you guys know, I've said, there's one or two ways to build the tallest building. One, you build the tallest building. Two, you tear down the buildings around you so you are the tall, tallest building. Most people live in that one. They're always tearing other people down so that they feel better about themselves. That's where, unfortunately, most people in our society live. Building the tallest building is basically understanding your value, your worth. So that's really the concept here. If you work on that, be the best partner you can possibly be. Um, you guys know I've talked about even, you know, that partner that wants to argue. I'm not going to argue with you. If we can talk like two human beings, we'll talk. But I'm not going to sit here and I'm not going to argue with you. This is not about right or wrong. This is not about uh, superiority. You being the servant, unfortunately, like you guys have heard me talk about before, a lot of the gentlemen that I hear talk about the woman being... Um, 
oh, uh, well, not the word obedient. Well, you guys know what I'm talking about. But basically, he believes he's the man. He calls the shots, that type of stuff. Normally, the gentleman that I hear say that just believes that they really have a low self-esteem for their wives. And they really look down on them. A uh, gentleman that understands the significance of a woman, the significance of his partner, are guys that you don't hear talking that stuff. They're, they're not running around talking about because leadership is understanding when you lead and when you allow others to lead. And again, that's a whole different conversation because uh, you guys know I get into that, you, you know, almost got me rolling there because on that, that, that beta of alpha conversation that people made up, which is a silly philosophy, because I tell people if you're, if you're hollering about alpha and these guys are alphas and um, who's an alpha man, who's a beta man and all that, it's all garbage. It's just conversations of, again, of tearing down buildings so that you feel better about yourselves. Because if you have two alpha guys, and I remember uh, two... Uh, um, matter of fact, Dwayne Wade and Dwayne Wade was the one having the conversation. He said when he was with the Miami Heat and um, him and LeBron, who are both alpha dogs, um, he recognized that in order for that team to be the best team possible, he needed to step back and allow LeBron to actually be the leader. That's how they would get their best results. So wouldn't that make him beta if, if we're living in this uh, alpha beta conversation that we're talking about? I'm an alpha dog. Wouldn't that make him a beta man the moment that he stepped back and allowed someone else to step up front? Think about it. Because people say, well, no, that's not. Why is it different? You're telling a gentleman who steps back and allows his wife to lead that he's a beta. So why, if he steps back and let another guy, another man lead, he is in beta? Huh. Interesting. The bottom line is a leader understands your job is to build up, create an environment for those that are following you or those that are in your uh, uh, care, that you take care of them, you build them up. Protecting them is to make sure that they have an environment that they can grow, they can prosper, they can get the things they want out of their lives and that you're gonna be there to make sure that it's, it's possible, that that environment is safe for them to do. That's protecting. Protecting is not treating her like a servant and telling her she's here to serve you. Oh, folks, here we go. Ron, get off that subject. That wasn't the conversation here today. But you guys know I, I, that gets me fired because I get so tired of hearing this alpha beta conversation. Um, he's, a, he's a beta guy. Silly conversations. But anyway, back to the conversation here today so we don't stay on that. Um, the bottom line is you have to decide in your relationship when enough is enough. When you have that partner ha that has decided that, again, like I said before, they checked out. They're out of the relationship. The only way for me that you can truly make that decision is when you truly do the stuff that we're talking about. And that's you get you together first. You get very, very clear where you're headed. Um, you be the best partner you could possibly be. Um, that, folks, that, that means maybe uh, getting that outside help. Listen to stuff that I teach, which, I, you know, I, I know I have some insights. Listen to other people, reading other books, doing the research, going to counseling. This is what I'm talking about. Giving your all doesn't mean I served you a plate for dinner or I took you out to eat or I bought you flowers or I made you dinner. That's, folks, that's so superficial. We, we, that, that, that's not giving your all means... I'm, I'm looking every way possible to be the best partner I can possibly be, which means I'm going to have to get input from others. I'm going to have to get input from my partner. I'm going to have to find out which is where you get most of the information from. Uh, but this is why we're saying when is enough enough, because you may have that partner that doesn't tell you because they have checked out and they're like, it doesn't matter. And, and they just don't want to tell you anything because, again, they've walked out. But that's when you're going to really have to deal with just outside stuff and getting you together, building that tallest building. And then when you get through, you get to look and see, is that person the right person? And you can figure that out at that point. Because what happens in some relationships is as you get that stuff and get your stuff together and you become the best partner that you could be, they see that. And their heart changes and they get on board. And they, and, and they, and they, and they become, and that, that's one of those relationships that turn around and they become uh, an awesome couple because the fact is, but it took that one to make the decision, I'm not going to let what you do influence what I do. 
I'm just going to be the best partner, person, human being, brother, cousin, uncle, because the folks, it all, like I said, it all works in the same. If you work on becoming the best you possible, all your relationships will start to fall in line and your partner will recognize that and they'll do one or two things. They're going to join you because they like what they see and you'll have an incredible, credible relationship or they'll make the decision. They don't really care because they're out they're They're out there in other trying to get in other relationships or doing other, but, but they, no matter what you do, they've decided they just, they just, or they just look down upon you. And I've seen that unfortunately um, with a lot of guys, again, with that male ego stuff that really look down upon women and they'll never tell you that that's, that's what it is. They have no, um, um, what is it we want to say? But basically they feel like women are second class citizens and that basically your only job is you're here to have sex and to serve your man. And really that's your job. And that's got to be the to the lowest element of seeing any human being that they only serve you. Um, so, but anyway, you guys know, woo, almost went there again. But bottom line is become the best you possible as I'm always talking about. Then you'll recognize if you have a partner who's checked out and is determined that they're, they're not going to even try. They're not willing to go get counseling. They're not willing to change. They're, they're just going to treat you the same way that they have. And, and for them, they don't feel like anything they're doing is wrong, even though they can see it's destroying you mentally, which, again, as we said before, will destroy you uh, physically. And I, and I use this, and I mean this is a different subject since we mentioned finances earlier um, on the bankruptcy issue because I've had that conversation come up too. Because I was in financial service for almost 30 years, I tell people, do everything you can. And this is, and again, this relates to the relationship stuff. Do whatever you can not to declare bankruptcy. But folks, if you're losing sleep, you're starting to get gray hairs. <laughs> you're getting stressed out. You're screaming at your spouse. You're screaming at your kids. You're doing all of that because you feel like your financial situation has got you under a bear, uh, uh, has got you uh, basically where you feel like you have no hope. It's time to declare. It's time to do the bankruptcy and move on. And I know it's tough. I'm not, uh, that's not something I take lightly, but that's the same thing, same uh, philosophy I feel like in a relationship. You do everything you can. Try to make that relationship. And, and I'm really talking to those of you that are married. If, if you single, and you got a person that really don't want to participate, let them go, okay? <laughs> Marriage is a little, uh, you've made an agreement, a promise, uh, uh, depend on your spiritual beliefs. You made a commitment, okay? Because to me, that's what the marriage thing is. When people try to say it's, it's, it's no different than they, it's different. That's the whole purpose of what everybody wants to say. It's just a piece of paper. No, that's the difference. The people that say it's a piece of paper are the ones that have never been married. When you make that commitment to that person, that's when you need to do whatever it takes to fight to keep that person. And that's why I'm saying there's a difference. Because if you're not married to them, you haven't even made that commitment that you're willing to do whatever it takes to make it work. And I know that in itself is going to create, people are going to get upset that I said that because they think you could be so committed without the paper. You can buy into that if you want to. Again, those that believe that have never been married. People do know the difference. That's why I know people who've been married and now they're dating and will only date and they're with partners that they've been with for ages and they won't remarry. It's because the same thing. They know it's different. They know it's different. Um, but anyway, bottom line, be the best you possible. Then you can recognize if that person is right. And if they're not right, folks. And marriage, like I said, I, 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 I'm hesitant about saying, you know, go, leave, walk out, bye, see you later. But folks, if you got a partner that you're doing everything possible to make this work, and they're committed to do everything possible to make sure it doesn't, there does become a line where you have to cut the tie because life is too short for you to be depressed for the next 10, 15 years trying to make something work when the other person has already decided they're refusing, in other words, to make it work. You deserve better. And as you guys know, it ain't right, it ain't wrong. 
It is my opinion. Now, run on over to ronsimplifiedmyers.online. Again, that's ronsimplifiedmyers.online. You can see all the things that I have going on. And as you guys know, if you're not having fun, you should be doing something else. Folks, get in there. Be the best you possible. As you know, that's all I'm always talking about. Then you can recognize if the person is the right person. But folks, if they're not, for your own sake, for your life, because that is what we're talking about here, it might be time to set them free. Talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.